G'day, welcome to Matt's workshop. Today I'm just going to quickly run through the buttons and some of the functions of the Ruida 6445 controller. This is from Cloud Ray Laser. It's uh, just a quick tutorial, it doesn't go into depth a lot, but I just hope that this video helps you use the controller and know what some of the buttons on there mean. So this is the Ruida controller RDC6445 from Cloud Ray Laser. The first thing I'm going to do is change the language. I'm going to show you how to do that if you've just purchased one and it's not in English. You notice here it's got the language it's in, it's all not understandable to me. So the way that you would do it is press menu. Go down to the fourth option using the arrow keys, then press enter. Select the first option and press enter. And these are all the languages that are available on the controller. We can select the third one, English, and press enter. So the first few buttons we're going to look at is the reset, the start, pause and the stop. The reset button will reset the machine, move the laser head back to origin 00, zero and then return it back to the position of the last known user set origin. We just press that, the machine will reset. You can cancel the reset by pressing the escape button. Now it's returned back to the last known origin. The start button or pause button will start a job or pause a job. We'll select the file just to demonstrate. The laser tube is off so it won't fire in this case, but it will start the job. If I want to pause the job part way through, I could press pause make any adjustments that I need to do or if I need to leave the laser machine for some reason answer the phone and not pay attention to it I can pause the job and when I return press the start button again and it would continue from where it was left off if I want to cancel a job completely press the stop button and it will return end the job back at its user set origin now for for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll turn the laser tube back on for a short time. So the next button you see here is the pulse button. The pulse button will pulse the laser, or as the manual says, give the laser a splash. Basically, it will fire the laser so that you can see either how you're going to align your mirrors, if you're doing mirror alignment, or in this case, we can mark the board. You can see that the laser fired onto that position. The next button is the focus button. I'm going to turn the laser tube off for safety. If I need to focus the machine, I can either press the focus button if my machine has an automatic focus sensor switch in it and an automatic bed platform that goes up and down. In this case, if you were to press the focus button, there's no sensor switch to tell it to focus and no automatic bed so it won't focus. It will time out because it won't be able to do it or I could press stop to cancel. So what that would mean is I would need to just use the manual buttons and the uh, little gap spacer that's been sent to set the focus depth. The other buttons are the menu and file buttons. The menu lets you get into adjust settings using the arrow keys to uh, move around in the menus and to press enter to select. Press escape to go back. The file button allows you to select files that you've sent to the laser controller from either RDWorks or Lightburn. Using the arrow keys you can cycle through these. It holds up to about 90 or 100 files. Once you've selected the file press enter and it will load that. That is now the current job. If your laser controller is not connected directly to your computer to RDWorks or Lightburn using the Ethernet or USB cable, you can save your file onto a USB thumb drive. What you do is plug that into the machine, select the file button, using the arrow across button, go down the menu until you get to U-Disk and press enter. Now you need to read the U-Disk files, so press enter and it will show you the files that are on this USB drive. Select that file and copy to memory and press enter. 
copy has been successful, press escape. This file is now in our file list. We can then load that file and run that job. The frame button shows the perimeter area that the job will be running in. If I press the frame, the laser head will move to the outside perimeter of the job. This allows us to position it on the job and make sure it's going to fit. We can use the arrow buttons to make adjustments onto where it will start. Once we've moved the arrow to where we want it to start, the laser head, we then press origin. The origin is now a user set origin, so it will start in that position. We could then do a frame again to see if it's going to fit in the position that we want it. The next thing I want to show you is how to change the power and speed settings of a current layer that's being run on a job. So if I was to start this job, the orange layer will run first and then the purple layer. I'm going to start this job. The first layer is running at 100 millimeters a second at 20% power. Again, the laser head is not on, so it's not going to start burning, but I'm using this for demonstration. If I wanted to change the speed of the job that was running, I could pause the job and change the power and speed settings, or I could even continue and just let the job run. If I was to change it now while it's running, I press the speed button. It's currently running at 100 millimeters a second. We're talking about the first layer. And change that to 250 millimeters a second and press enter. You'll notice that the laser head starts moving a lot quicker. The same goes for the power settings. If I was to press power, it's currently running at 20% power. I could change that to 40% power and press enter. So while the job's running, it won't actually change the display of the power and speed settings on the screen, but it will adjust it at the power, the power at the laser head. This won't change on the screen until after the job has been completed. The power and speed settings that are changed are for the current layer only. We'll just let that layer finish and I'll show you that it would then go on to the next layer at 400 millimeters a second. So it only changes the power and speed settings for the current layer. I'll drop the speed on this one to 50 millimeters a second. And you'll see that it changes that layer new speed. These settings will change after the job has been finished or cancelled. You see here the new settings are now visible. If I want to change the power and speed settings of that file, prior to the job starting, I load the file, take note of the settings, can press enter. I'm now on the first layer, the orange layer, and I can press enter and change that layer's settings to 100 millimeters a second, 15% power, 60% power, and go down and write it back to the file. If I don't write it to the file and press escape, the previous settings will be saved. So press the enter key to save. Set up success. These file, this file has now been changed with a new setting, but they're not displayed here. So to load that file, I can press file, and the new settings will be displayed. If I want to change the layer of the purple, the speed and power of the purple layer, press enter, go down and go through the same process. After I've made any changes, making sure I press right. So this button here changes the laser head movement. So we, it corresponds up here, we have manual or continuous. If I have it on continuous and I use the arrow key, the laser head will move until I release the button. If I change it to manual, it will go at per step. So the steps are set in the controller. I have mine set at one millimeter. If I was to press the buttons now, it will move one millimeter, and that's great for fine adjustment and fine tuning on where you want it to start. If you want to change this manual step distance, you can do that through the file menu. Press menu, go across using the arrow keys to function plus. Press enter. 
go down to manual set plus and press enter and you see it's on one millimeter so I go down to one millimeter and I could change that to 10 millimeters and press enter but what I'd need to do is actually write that back to the controller press enter it's set up as being successful so I can now press escape now when I press the arrow keys to move the laser head it'll move 10 millimeters at a time I'm going to quickly change it back menu function plus manual set one millimeter and then write it back the last button we're going to look at today is the shift button it's used in the menu system and it's a special button that's only used a few times for example if we were to press menu and go across to function plus we could set a keyboard lock and press enter this would lock the keyboard unless we had a password so to set the password you would press enter and the shift button is used to open up the keyboard so that's how we can use the letter numbers on the keyboard in the case you could press shift to close the keyboard or just use numbers as a password but if you wanted those letters press shift using the arrow buttons you could put in the letters as well so that's one place that the shift button is used the other place that it is used um, would be in origin set so we go to enter and we could set multiple origins so for example if we were to turn origin 1 and enable it it'll ask us to press shift locate using the arrow buttons and then select origin so thanks for visiting Matt's workshop I hope I've explained some of the features and the buttons that are on this RDC6445 controller from CloudRay Laser. I'll put a link to the manual in the description below. You'll also find a link to my social media websites as well as CloudRay Laser's website. If you haven't already, press the like button if you like the video and uh, subscribe for more videos coming out shortly. And if you put the notification bell on, you'll be notified when they um, are released. And until next time, take care. Cheers.